I'm now going to do a demonstration at home, which is very similar to the one I do in lecture 18 of 803. Except at home it will be very primitive. At MIT it is way more advanced. At home I do not have a point light source. I have a light bulb which is about an inch <laughs> in diameter. But the idea will be very similar. On the table I have a frame, glass frame with a picture behind it. It will be this. It reads Brillo. And this is glass. I will aim that table light that I have as much as I can roughly in a direction so that this angle is roughly 56 degrees. Not exactly, and of course it had probably in the range all the way from, who knows, 53 to 63, I do not know. It bounces off this plate, this glass, and I look here at the reflected light. This angle is the same as this angle, because that's what reflection is all about. If this angle were exactly 56 degrees, the light that reflects from this glass plate is 100% polarized in the direction perpendicular to this plane. And I indicate that with the red lines. It's meant to be perpendicular to this plane. So when I look here, I see this light. That's very bright light because of this lamp. It is so bright that I only see the lamp and I don't even see this picture. And I will show you that, I will do a demonstration. I have linear polarizers. I used to have large ones, now I only have small ones. If now I hold this linear polarizer in front of my eye, so that all this light, which is linearly polarized, will be killed, that means I have to put my linear polarizer in this direction, then I will not see this light, which is the glaring light from this lamp. But of course there is other light in the room. And all of a sudden I will see now the picture. So the bottom line is, Without any linear polarizer that I have in my hand, I will only see reflected in this picture that bright light, and I won't even see the word Brillo. Now I use the polarizer, and I put it in front of my eye, in, in fact I will put it in front of the camera, in such a way that I will kill all this linear polarized light, and lo and behold, you will now see the Brillo picture. If you're ready for it, I am too. You now see the table light, which is there, and you see the light that is reflected off the glass of the Brillo picture. And all you see is this bright light, and you will never have guessed that behind that is the word Brillo. Now I take my linear polarizer and I put my linear polarizer in such a way that I kill that light that is linearly polarized. Now I let the light through that is linearly polarized. You don't see the Brillo. Now I kill that light and you can see the word Brillo more or less. Once more, all the reflected light linearly polarized, and now I kill most of it. And you can do this at home. 
Last but not least, you know that many sunglasses that you buy are linearly polarized. And of course, there is a reason for that. And that has to do with the fact that if you drive on a road which is wet and the sun is above the horizon and you're driving in the direction of the sun, then the sunlight will be reflected off the wet road. And that's glaring. That's a nuisance, maybe even dangerous. Now, the Brewster angle for water is not 56 degrees as it is for most glass. It's more like 53 degrees, but that's a detail. What is not a detail is that depending upon how high the sun is above the horizon, if you're driving in this direction, the reflected light in the water will be nearly 100% polarized in this direction. Not in this direction, but in this direction. And you want to kill that. Just like I killed in the demo the reflected light of my table light. So in what direction now do you think? Will your sunglasses be linearly polarized? Will it be like this? Or will it be like this? To optimize the reduction of glare. In the demonstration, you see that my hands, hands are shaking. No, I do not have Parkinson's, even though many of you think I do, I don't. I challenge you, hold in your right hand a small camera. Then hold a very small piece of linear polarizer in front of the lens. If you're not careful, then of course you're not even in front of the lens. Look, look now at my, my fingers already. Your hands begin to shake. You cannot hold them still because you have nothing to hold on to. You cannot do this. That would give support. So both your hands are in mid-air. In addition, you have to move the whole camera in such a way that you get close to this angle of 56 degrees. It's very noticeable. My hands are shaking. I have no Parkinson's. If some of you believe I have Parkinson's anyhow, be my guest. It's your problem, but not mine.